gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and once again, in collaboration with Chip Theory Games, I am bringing you a gear lock guide. And the gear lock we're talking about today is Boomer. If you want a general introduction to Too Many Bones gear locks and how they work, then you should go and watch my gear lock anatomy video, which is the first video in this series. Then come back and learn all about Boomer and who she specifically is. So let's talk Boomer. For this video, I have gathered all of Boomer's stuff as well as the battle mat. So Boomer has her gear lock mats, I've got her reference sheets, her dice, and then a battle mat where I've placed her in one of the ranged positions because she is a ranged fighter. And we also have our troll youngin who I will pick on throughout this video. As with all gear locks, Boomer's stats are up here, as are her innate and innate plus one abilities, and the fact that she is a ranged fighter. But we're going to be talking about what's going on over here. Starting with Boomer's innate ability is important though, because every Gearlock's innate ability is a bit different. Boomer's actually results in dice being present on her mat before the game even starts. So she automatically starts with some dice that she doesn't have to train that are just innately there. And we're gonna talk about those first because they are crucial to playing her and playing her well. Boomer's innate skill involves her entire scavenger profession. And that means that there are four dice that start on her mat. And they are also clearly identified on her reference sheet because the bullet next to them has a circle around it. And that always means that that's a die that you start with when you begin play. So let's go ahead and put those starting dice out and talk about what they do. Essentially, Boomer lives up to her name. She is quite the fireball, literally, and her job is to scavenge for useful materials, build bombs, and then throw bombs everywhere. Because her bombs can be a bit unpredictable, Boomer is harder to play solo than she is co-op, but it's absolutely doable, and hopefully after watching this video, you'll feel confident playing her no matter how you like to play too many bones. All of Boomer's skills are powered by the fact that she has to build bombs, which is why she starts with these four dice. These three dice are bomb elements, and this die, the boom counter, is literally a counter that tells you how many grenades she's able to explode at any given time. So you know how many bombs are available by looking at the boom counter. There are also three bomb components that she'll collect. Die number one is elements, so you're going to get different counts of elements on this die. Or when you roll it, you might miss, but let's hope that that does not happen. The second die is casing, which again gives you different numbers or bones of this bomb element, so you we'll roll to see how many casings are available to you. And then our third element is called the fuse. And once again, you can roll to get different numbers of fuses. You can have up to three, or maybe you have an unsuccessful bones roll, but again, let's hope not. And then all three, all three of these elements come together to create bombs, and you know how many are available using the boom counter. The boom counter you never roll. It is a counter that stays on your mat. So you're always gonna start at zero because you don't start with any bombs. And then we're gonna look at how you roll these to see how to change that. So if you look at Boomer's reference sheet, you're gonna see a couple of different abbreviations next to these element dice. One is immediate, so you can use the die immediately if you're trying to build a bomb right now. One is locked, so you can roll for bomb elements that you lock in your locked die area and then you use them to build a bomb later. And then you also have counter because once you've rolled them, you use them as a counter to see how many elements you've got left. So let's say I'm gonna roll these. All right, so this actually worked out pretty well. I've got two elements, two fuses, and one casing. So at this point, I can place any of these in locked slots. In this case, let's say that maybe I don't need a bomb right away. So what I might do is lock my elements and lock my fuse, but I don't actually have to keep this one if I don't want it. And if I rolled bones, I wouldn't have to keep that either. So let's say that I think, well, you know, I think I can maybe do a bit better on my casing roll next time. So I'm going to put this here back in this slot. Note, however, that to roll all three of those dice, I did have to pay dexterity. So that would basically right now take up Boomer's entire turn because she's only got three decks. That's one of the reasons that Boomer is considered a bit more difficult to play in solo than in co-op, because you have to really use a lot of her dexterity to keep her bomb elements in action. But let's say on a future turn, I use another dex. And ooh, this time I got three casings. Awesome. So I'm going to lock that too. Now what's going to happen is that while it does cost dex to roll these dice, the good news is that Boomer has a free action that she can use anytime as long as these counters are working for her. So let's say that I want to increase this boom counter at last. I can tick all of these down by one. 
And now that I've spent one of each of my elements, I can increase the boom counter to one because I used these three things to make this bomb. Boomer's also able to do this more than once. So I'd also have the option of making a second bomb, which would move the counter on these down to zero and it would move this one down to one. And then the bomb counter would go up to two. However, once the counters on these reach zero, they do not go back on your mat. They go into your exhausted dice area to be rolled in a future battle. So you can't just keep rolling elements forever and ever and get all the bombs you want in the course of one battle. These dice do exhaust when they run out of materials. The other thing is that you might actually choose to exhaust a locked die for a future battle because you think that the number is too low. So here we only have one on this casing at this point, and maybe I think that that's just kind of a low number. Why would I hold myself to that battle to battle? So I could actually choose at any point to exhaust this die from the lock slot. And then for the next battle, these will all go back on the mat, ready to be rolled again. My boom counter, however, would hang out at two until I used some of these skills down here, which is what we're going to talk about next. I also want to note that Boomer's boom counter can never go above three. So you are never going to have more than three bombs to work with at a given time. All right, so I've put my dice back. We've got two booms on our boom counter. And now we are gonna talk about all these other sweet abilities that Boomer's skill at scavenging allows us to try. So we're actually gonna start with Boomer's grenadier profession. These are her attack bombs and they are awesome. One thing to remember, however, is that even if you have skill dice here, you cannot use them unless you have booms on your boom counter. You tick this down every single time you use a die from here. Whether or not it hits successfully, you have to use a bomb to throw a bomb. So you can't do any of this stuff until you have got a good system going with her scavenger ability. But let's get to the fun. Let's talk about frag first. This is Boomer's Frag Die, and as you can see, it can do quite a bit of damage, or it has a red bones on it, which we're about to talk about. So when Boomer throws her Frag Die, your max damage is four. The other damage sides actually all say three, and then one side is a miss that we're gonna have to discuss. But let's just put it down for right now. Frag is a very dangerous die because it does splash damage. Let's say that Boomer would like to do some damage to this troll youngin, and she's going to try to do it with her frag. When you use your grenade, what happens is you choose a position where you wish to throw that grenade, and then if you successfully hit, the chip that is in this space, whether it is friend or foe, is going to take the full amount of damage on the die. And then all adjacent units, whether they are your friend or whether they're an enemy, are going to take half that damage rounded down. So let's say that we want to go after this troll youngin with our frag. In this case, we rolled a three. He'll take three damage. And then if anybody else was next to him, then they would take one damage because that's half rounded down. This is also why Boomer operates best from a distance because if she had been here, then she would also have taken damage because she is next to the space where she threw her bomb. So fragging is awesome, but be careful about throwing your frag bomb into an area that has a lot of tight combat going on involving your allies. The other thing that you can do with a frag is let's say that you are willing to do a little bit less damage, but you want to try for it. You could actually choose to throw the bomb into this space and just let half of the splash damage hit the troll. So if Boomer is here and she's just desperate to hit this troll with anything, then she could actually throw the bomb here and he would take splash damage and she wouldn't take any damage at all because she's not adjacent. So you can make some flexibility choices about that. So be strategic about where Boomer throws bombs and you'll see a lot of dividends. However, if Boomer decides to throw this and she lands on a bones face, one thing that's special about Boomer is that a lot of her dice have these red bones faces. So let me hold it up. It's a red die, it's hard to see. So most bones are just a black line outline on top of whatever die face they show up on. But if they are red inside, if the bones have a red filling, that means that Boomer has to use them in her backup plan. So if she rolls her frag die and misses completely and gets bones, she can't just be like, well, I'll just try that again on a future turn. No, you cannot. You have to put this in your backup plan. So let's say that Boomer decided to roll for frag. She ticked down her boom counter because you have to regardless of result and then rolled this bones. She can't try frag again later. She has to put it in her backup plan. So watch out for those red bones on Boomer because they do have a required 
placement. But let's just put the frag dot here for now. So as you can see, Boomer's Grenadier profession has two starting spots. Frag progresses to Big Boom and Stunner progresses to Napalm. So let's talk about Frag to Big Boom first and then we're gonna talk about Stunner to Napalm second. When you are deciding where skills go on a Gearlock mat, remember that the stars have no prerequisites and that then you follow the arrows to see what you're allowed to do next on a given profession. So Frag has an arrow that progresses over to Big Boom. And as you can see from the symbol in the die, Big Booms are in fact a Big Boom with some potentially scary consequences. A big boom is going to do what's called a controlled blast, and that means that it deals the number of damage on the die face to all baddies on the battle mat. So if there were multiple baddies on this mat, it would do damage to every single one of them, no matter where they are. So Boomer can just do one damage to everyone if she wants to. Unfortunately, there is also the fact that Boomer can in fact do damage to everyone. This die face is going to do one damage to all baddies on the mat. But this one with the skull in the bottom left corner does damage to everyone on the mat, including both baddies and members of the party, including Boomer herself. So controlled blasts are super fun and awesome, but they also have some pretty serious blowback potential, so be careful. One thing that's interesting about this die is that there are no bones faces on it at all. It's just a question of whether Boomer is going to hit all the bad guys or if she's going to hit everyone. So once again, Boomer's capacity to do damage in multiple locations is unparalleled. Boomer's other little tree within her profession is Stunner to Napalm. So let's talk about Stunner first since that's the starting spot. This is what Boomer's Stunner die looks like. It does have a red bone, so if you have a failed roll, be aware of what that means. But all the other sides have a stun symbol with the number five. This is not five turns, it's not five damage, it's not five anything like that. This five corresponds to the baddie points that a baddie can have in order to be affected by the stunner. So essentially a five point baddie or less can be affected by the stunner, but if you've got a 20 point baddie, it's no dice there. But essentially what stun lets you do is put a stun effect die on the target and it makes that target lose its next turn. So if you need a little bit more tempo in your game, you might choose to use the stunner in order to knock the enemy off balance. So effect dice are black, and this one, as you can see, has the stars that match the stun symbol on Boomer's die. So you would put this on an enemy if you successfully rolled stunner against a five-point enemy or less. So let's put stunner in its slot, and then stunner progresses to napalm. Napalm is kind of like a horrifying bomb version of poison in that when you successfully roll it, at the start of this baddie's turn, it'll take this number of damage for X rounds. So if you look at this die face, you're gonna be able to see that the enemy that you hit with this die is going to take two damage for two turns. So let's say that we've successfully rolled it against this troll youngin. On the first start of his turn, he's gonna take two damage, and then we're actually gonna tick it down so that we know. And then his next turn, he's gonna take two damage for one turn, so this turn he'll take it, and then you take the die off. So this die will always do two damage at the start of a target baddie's turn, but the second number is like a counter that you use to count down. So if it's three, you tick it down to two, then to one, and then the die is removed. There are red bones on this die, and you also have to be careful because this die has a backlash effect. This result with a skull on it means that you also take the backlash and do the stated number of damage to yourself. In this case, one, because the skull has a one on it, so that's the amount of backlash damage you would take. So does it smell like napalm in the morning? You tell me. So these are all the dice in Boomer's Grenadier profession. They are aggressive. They sometimes have negative effects, but they are a lot of fun. So next we are gonna talk about Boomer's next profession, which is utility bomber. So not all bombs have to do bad things. Sometimes they help you. And because each of the spots in Boomer's utility bomber profession has a star, there is no prereq. You can train any of these dice at any time as long as you have the skill point. I will note before we talk about them that once again, these all do count as booms and they will all lower your boom counter. So just like your grenadier profession, your utility bomber profession requires you to be using your scavenger ability aggressively to make sure that you always have the booms you need to throw these useful bombs. So our first useful bomb is called smoke screen. So as you can see from this die face, we've got smoke and we have different counter mounts on the smoke side of this die. You can roll one or two turns worth of smoke screen, or you can roll red bones, which, which again have to go in your backup plan. So watch out. So what smoke screen does is it allows you to choose yourself or an ally. So you can roll this for yourself 
or you can roll this for a friend. And depending on the result you roll, the next number of times a baddie targets this unit with an attack or a skill, it will miss. So if Boomer rolls smokescreen and gets a two, she will spend her first turn without the baddie being able to hit her. We'll count it down. She'll spend another turn being unhittable by this enemy. It'll count down to a zero, and then we will exhaust it until the next battle war can be rolled again. One thing to note about smokescreen is that this is a true counter. So you cannot roll it, get a one, and think, eh, maybe I'll save it and try to reroll for a two later. You don't get to do that. You have to take the one, use the counter, and exhaust the die. Boomer's next useful die is called Sonic Cleanse. And what this one does is it removes all negative effect dice from the entire party, and it prevents more from being added for the number of turns that are listed on the counter. So you can have up to two turns of no negative effect dice, maybe only one, but either way, it's actually great because this die also has no bone spaces. So you know that you're gonna get rid of negative effect dice no matter what you roll. Again, this is a counter just like the smoke screen. So no, you can't try for two turns instead of one. You gotta take what you get. But when I say that it removes negative effect dice, I'm talking about the kind of stuff that's on these dice. So for example, we have stun, poison is considered a negative effect, weaken is considered a negative effect, and so is bleed. So if you've got baddies with a whole lot of abilities and they're just messing with you, then Boomer can use Sonic Cleanse to erase all of that and have a cleaner, fresher start that is less terrifying. Boomer's other utility bomber die is called Flashbang. And this one can affect baddies of either one point or less. So you might use it against a one point baddie, or if you get lucky in how you roll, it can affect a five point baddie or less. There are no studs on here that say 20, so this is for use against baddies with five points or less only. But what it allows you to do is add a disabled effect die to a baddie if it has X points or less. So in this phase, it would be five, but sometimes it's one. So if you check out Boomer's reference sheet, it will tell you disable literally means that this effect disables a baddie unit's skills for the remainder of a battle. So if you've got someone with very annoying skills, and trust me, there are baddies with very annoying skills. This is great. So these are Boomer's utility bomber abilities. She can smoke screen. She can remove negative effect dice from the whole party and she can disable baddie units. Next, let's talk about Boomer's keen eye profession, which starts with body search and progresses through bigger boom and the search for 325. As we know, Boomer likes to scavenge. She is a scavenger looking for bomb parts and keen eye is kind of like an extension of that. The first die in this profession is called body search. I should note that before you can use body search, you need to have defeated at least one baddie because you can't do a body search without a body. And this is essentially a grab bag of nice die results that you can roll and just kind of see what happens. You might get a bones, although this is not a red bones, so you can save the die and try again later, but you can get some buff HP, you can get some loot, or you can get a bomb part of your choice. So if you wanna combine this with other bomb parts that you already have, you could even add this to lock dice that are already in your slots to add an extra boom. If you're very lucky, you could even roll a two result on your multi-use parts face and let's say that we had one die in a lock spot with a one on it. You could take these two, treat them as two different parts with this one to take your boom counter up. Multi-use parts can also be locked to mix and match with other bomb component dice that you roll later. So while the other die faces are good, the one with the bomb parts is definitely the best. Next we have bigger boom. So essentially bigger boom has an image of a bigger boom on it. And what this will do is it will, well, it could be bones, but what it typically will do is it will increase the die result of a frag or big boom die by the number listed on the die face. So if I roll this in tandem with frag and I get these two results, so a four and this one, then the damage that I do to the position I chose to bomb will be four plus one, which is five instead of just four. If I'm really lucky, I might get two extra damage, which brings my total damage up to six. But you don't want to be next to this, remember, because huh, that would mean that every adjacent unit also takes three damage. The other thing that's pretty cool is you can actually roll this die along with both your frag and your big boom if you have enough bombs in the boom counter to do it. So if you want to roll two bombs at once, you can roll these two dice and this. So let's say that these were my results. My frag would be four plus two for six damage in the chosen position, plus three splash damage on every adjacent space. 
plus I would do three damage to everybody on the board by using this in conjunction with big boom. So you actually can have it all if you've got enough booms in your bag. So this die affects everything you roll it with. It's not just either or. And be careful because that also means that if you do damage to your party, that will increase as well. So watch out for that bigger boom because it really does make your booms bigger. And then our third die in this category is called the Search for 325. So 325 is a special bomb element that Boomer can use with her special Holy Hand Grenade consumable, which we're gonna get to in a moment. There are a few bones die faces on here, although they are double bones, which is cool. But element 325 can automatically increase your boom counter by one, which is amazing. It can grant you a Holy Hand Grenade to add your consumables area, also amazing. Or you can roll element 325. Element 325 is a result that you can lock and you can use it in conjunction with your Holy Hand Grenade to add to the amount of damage that you do with your Holy Hand Grenade. So we'll come back to this die in a moment, but your Holy Hand Grenade has two numbers on the die face. The number on the left is the number you normally use and it is white. The blue number on the right is the amount of damage you can do using your Holy Hand Grenade if you are using it in conjunction with Element 325. So as you can see, there is quite a difference and it is very helpful. So if you search for 325, you might get something good out of it, no matter what die face you actually roll. So now we're on to Boomer's consumables. She has a bag of booms and a holy hand grenade. The bag of booms is just a generically useful consumable die. When you roll this, you're either gonna get some more multi-use parts, which lets you build more booms, or you'll actually just get a plus one uptick on your boom counter. So this die face has instantaneous use and you just push your boom counter up by one. But a die face like this one is lockable. You can put it in a lock slot and then use it to build more booms later. So you're definitely gonna like your bag of booms. And then next we have the Holy Hand Grenade, the ultimate in consumables because it's called the Holy Hand Grenade, that's awesome. So this die is a great consumable because it basically lets you throw a bomb without decreasing your boom counter, although it does still cost decks to throw it. Some of these die faces are going to be a controlled blast, just like Big Boom, so you can do damage to the entire board. However, there are no sides that have negative effects for the party, which is awesome. And then if you get the Holy Hand Grenade, you're dealing the amount of damage stated on the die face to the position where you chose to throw the grenade. Again, the number on the left is just the base number, but if you have element 325 to pair with it, then you get to do damage based on the number on the right. I do, however, recommend that you count to three. All right, so if you've stuck with me so far, there are just a few more things to say about Boomer. The first is that I wanna point out her innate plus one is Resourceful Scavenger. It's basically the same thing as Scavenger where you roll her dice, but you're actually able to add a plus one to the results, so her scavenging gets better. And then I wanna talk about her backup plan. Boomer's backup plan has a lot of good stuff in it, so even if you have to use those red bones, it's not so bad. For one bone, she can throw odds, which lets her thump a target for one damage. For two bones, she can search again, so you can re-roll any unused scavenger die that was rolled this turn. So basically, if you roll a scavenger die, you don't love the results, and you don't use it to make any bomb parts, you could roll it again and try to get a better result. We've got Bluff Bomb, and basically you can select any occupied position and move the unit that is there to an adjacent position that is a boomer's choice. She can kind of tactically move people around on the battle mat to her advantage. For four bones, she can throw ends, which lets her thwack her target for three damage. For five bones, she can hide, and that means you can place an untargetable effect die on Boomer. And basically what that means is that until the start of her next turn, an opposing unit is not able to target her. So no baddies can do anything to Boomer for a turn if she spends five bones to hide. And of course, if she gets six bones, she can spend them all to upgrade to her innate plus one which again lets her add a plus one to each element casing and fuse roll results when she's looking for bomb components. Let's also take just a quick look at her beginner build strat. As usual, it's divided into stats and skills. So when it comes to stats, Boomer absolutely needs HP, prioritize it first, and then try to increase her attack next by at least one because she only has one attack and that's a little risky. After that, it just kind of depends on what your needs and playstyle are, or if you're playing with a party, you should think about your communal needs. When it comes to skills, it's really tempting to get a whole bunch of different grenades, but she can only throw so many per turn and she needs components to make the opportunity to throw more. So it's better to just start with frag and then maybe you should consider body search to help you get more components so you can throw more grenades. Smoke screen is also good because it gives you a little bit of peace in the middle of a tough battle. I find this especially true when playing solo. And so that is a general overview of Boomer. The main thing to know about her is that you need to put these bomb parts together in order to increase your boom counter 
and then you decrease your boom counter to throw all of these sweet, sweet bombs that you can train when you have skill points. Boomer can be a little bit challenging to play because remember, when you play with bombs, sometimes they blow up in your face, but if you learn to play Boomer well, you're gonna have a real blast. Thanks so much for watching everyone and happy gaming.